Hi, this is Glenn, and I'm out here looking at my horseradish bed. And as you can see, it's getting up there. I need to uh, cut it down. But you know, today is usually my day off. One day, so I thought, well, I gotta cut it. Then I gotta, you know, rinse it, wash it, and all that, and then trim it up and chop it up and put it in freezer bags and. But then I realized I'm breaking out the smoker for some ribs today. And I'm going to cut this down and use it as a bed to lay my ribs on. See what happens. You know, horseradish in the ribs could be good. Or, <laughs> so that's the plan. I got a colander and some scissors out here. I'm going to go to it and cut this stuff down and go in and rinse it and wash it and and uh, get it ready for the smoker. Okay, so here's today's rack of ribs. And uh, it's what my butcher calls a medium rack. And it still has the chine bone in the back, but it's not really too, too bad. And I might try and take this one out. Last time I did it, it was a pain in the neck. But I'm just gonna go from, from right about here down just cut this big chine bone out and I'm gonna leave all that extra meat on there last time I trimmed that out and that turned out to be a pain in the neck because then I had to use that for like a stir-fry which meant simmering it and, yeah and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut between these ribs with a sharp pointed knife just to open that up as well as take this first layer of skin off so I'm gonna get that done and uh, and we'll be back with this rack. Okay, I got that job done. And after I cut that chine bone off, I'm looking at it like my test rib. I mean, it's got a good sized bone on the back side. That's what I cut out, but uh, it's got a lot of good meat on there too. And then I got this, it's called Old Style Mustard with Honey. So now I'm gonna smear that all over the back side of these ribs and just the back side, not the top. We'll be back later. Yeah, here's the mustard. Boy, I just tasted it. It is good. It's got a nice tang like a yellow mustard, but a nice little sweetness from the honey. So that might counterbalance some of the horseradish. You know, we'll see. All right, I'm getting ready to fire this up and uh, might as well show you. In here, I have dried leaves. A buddy of mine brings over by the trailer load. So I'm using that as like an igniter and uh, up here I've got some small pecan and I got some bigger pieces behind me to, once it gets going and so we're gonna get ready to get this started and put those ribs on okay folks here I go with my way out ribs now these are uh, horseradish greens that I had to pick today anyhow and I didn't feel like fooling with it so I'm gonna lay that bed down of greens and throw my slab of ribs right on top of it bone side mustard side down leave them for a couple hours so uh, here we go we'll get started here in a minute okay I just laid this slab of ribs down uh, bone side mustard side down on top of this layer of uh, horseradish greens and then I topped it off with my uh, my uh, meat spice this is a heavier spice than I use for some of my other stuff uh, I, this is a new one I'll post on the website probably but it's more for beef heavy-duty stuff venison but um, because I'm smoking and the intensity of that I thought I'd go with a little bit more intense uh, rub but I'm not rubbing it in I just washed my hands again for the 45th time and I just let it sit so we're going to cover it and let it smoke for probably an hour and a half, too. Yeah, there's a good smoke on that uh, pecan wood right now. It's doing its job. It's it's smoking up a storm. And the temperature's right there at ideal, so we'll let her rip. Okay, it's uh, 3 o'clock. I started these at 1.30. Uh, we usually eat at 6, and these are going to take 4 hours, so I had not had them on this bed of greens and I'm about to remove the greens 
and keep the uh, mustard side, bone side down just the way they are for about another half hour. Then I'm going to flip them and uh, we'll get down to it here shortly. Well, I'm going to pick some of this asparagus that you see down through here. I have some more back there. Back there, some of it went by real quick today. And I had like a dozen I was going to get and uh, throw them in a pan with some uh, chicken broth and olive oil and just steam them, cover them with foil and steam them on that smoker. But, well, I don't know. I might have a dozen in there. It'll be enough. It'll be a finger food for us. But asparagus has been good to us this year. Okay, these ribs have been on for two hours, a couple hours. And then I got this stuff here, savory collection, I don't know, Memphis barbecue sauce. Came from our local grocery store, a very small chain, and uh, it's like 19 ounces and I got it for a buck. So I figure I'll try it, and if it sucks, I'll just figure out how to make the rest of it unsuck. But yeah, I can work with that. So I'm gonna try that sauce, so I'm gonna flip these right back over for another half an hour. And, uh, let them go for a while. Okay, I just uh, turned, turned the ribs, and we're gonna put them on the other side. And I didn't do anything except left that rub on, that I didn't rub on. And uh, we're gonna let that smoke, it's uh, like four o'clock. I'm gonna let them go for an hour probably like this. And uh, then I might flip them and put some sauce on the top. And uh, we'll see how this works out. Okay, I have everything in the final stages. Up there in that tin, I have some asparagus I showed you I picked out of the garden. And Lori brought home some corn, fresh corn, so we're roasting that. That's what I got into originally was roasting corn. And then we got our, our ribs. And uh, we're not too far, we're not too far from eating dinner at six. So I'm gonna cover it up and finish it up.